Thanks, Jay. So it's a little bit extension from our tomorrow's panel. So I already introduced the company. So I let's a bit more more color on what what we are doing. Um, I already expressed in the morning we are a true believer as a payload company that the payload makes a difference in the ADC space and. And her too is our view a very good example because it's one of the oldest targets. It's her two, trastuzumab, one of the oldest antibodies. And just um, the exchange of the old tubulin inhibitor to the new generation of a one inhibitor, you see the dramatic increase in the clinical data and the clinical efficacy coming out of the change of the payload. So this really, in our belief, um, makes the case. But don't forget that even patients on the TOPO1, on the NHER2, become resistant. And funny enough, so I have the same picture as one of my previous speakers today, um, because it's a very good illustration. Um, what is the common unmet medical need? So resistance to standard of care, to current available therapies. I do not need to repeat what my previous speaker has told you. So we need novel payloads with a novel mode of actions um, in that space. And this is just one data slide from a preclinical model. So we have a new payload. I come to this on the next slide. And this is a breast cancer model. The GIMP1 is famous in the space because it's found resistant to Ketsil as well to her 2 And you graph this into mice, you can recapitulate this one. And her 2 in a very high dose only slows down the tumor growth but a very low dose of our ADC with our payload, and this is a single administration, drives this highly resistant tumor into complete remission. It's only one-tenth of the dose, and here you have eight toxin molecules, here you have only two toxin molecules. So a dramatically lower toxin um, dose is needed to overcome the resistance to current standard of care to current therapy. So that's why we believe we very fit very good into the space and everybody is looking what is coming after the top of ones. So we built our company around this one. We have a very strong IP around this one. We have, believe we have a monopoly. And what is also very different to the other payloads, the chemical space is very narrow. So there's no other company in the world using that mode of action, working on that mode of action as a supply chain for this one. So we have IP around, a supply chain, know-how, so very unique in the space. So we have a full synthetic pr process in place. And we are now in the plug and play mode because we optimize the ADC technology. I usually call it, we harness the ADC technology for that novel payload. We already have partners for this one. Also mentioned this morning, Hua Dong took Chinese rights for our technologies for two assets. Sakira is doing the other way. They license the technology and do the take the antibody and the target from their own and develop with our support an ADC on this one. And this is another um, asset we have from a legacy asset. We have a royalty deal um, signed to earlier this year, which means gives us a very good cash. We already received the first tranche of this one. With this, we have the runway until 2025. We have another milestone coming later this year for the royalty stream sale giving us runway through 26 with all our programs. Basically, we're at clinical stage now. So we completely passed all preclinical stages. Our first program, HTP 101, as mentioned this morning, is targeting DCMA and multiple myeloma. I have a slide on this one. And next program coming out of our platform are scheduled for this year and next year to really maximize the output and the commercialization of our novel payload. Very briefly, we are not a target discovery company, we are not an antibody discovery, we are really focusing on the payload part. So we have more payloads than the STAR, than the Manhattan. So the idea is look for targets, look for antibodies, and then make the best in class ABCs out of our knowledge with the, with the available payloads. Um, so that's the business model, the core competence of Heidelberg Pharma. Use the best available payload, a novel, highly differentiated payload to make best-in-class ADCs, and then go down the development, go for partnering, co-develop, or even keep an upside on this one. Very brief on this one. So this is the star of our, the company, the Manhattan. Uh, for the rest of the talk, we also have a differentiated top of one technology, and we are working on the immune-stimulating uh, agent to really have a toolbox that for each target, for each tumor, 
you find the best payload for your ABC. So, the star of the show is the manitin. It inhibits eukaryotic transcription. And this is such a fundamental process, we never found any tumor cell which was resistant to that mode of action to the manitin. So by the design of the antibody, you can tackle any tumor type in the world with our technology. And again, we never found resistance to our tumor. So a few other features, we have a hydrophilic compound, which makes it very easy for CMC. Um, um, I'm part of the story. We are active on non-dividing cells. And if we talk about resistance, so what is the real, let's say, issue, the root cause of resistance and the poor prognosis of patients? These are the dormant tumor cells, which has become resistant to standard of care, which hibernate in the body, which wait for some kind of trigger of relapse. So you need to compound a payload which is able to kill these dormant tumor cells. And most of the time, these cells are non-dividing cells. So you need an agent which is working on non-dividing cells. And we have uh, demonstrated in several settings that we can proactively kill non-dividing cells with our payload. Last but not least, we have a biomarker because this morning we talked about, let's say, tumor selection. By this is a platform-wide biomarker um, where we can select and stratify patients for the clinical development. As mentioned, we have target exclusivity for our partners, and we are a single player in the space. And that mode of action is radically different for every other mode of action. Even chemotherapy has never used this one. So the first time that that mode of action will be used for human therapy and for cancer therapy. So this is basically in a nutshell how it looks like. So again, years of optimization. We have a standard IgG backbone. We have some mutations for proprietary conjugation, so the site-specific conjugation. We do FC silencing in order to reduce unspecific uptake. And we found that due to the potency of our drug, an anti drug to antibody ratio of 2.0 is sufficient. So we just graphed the CDRs from antibodies on our standard backbone, conjugate here our amenitin as a warhead. We have synthetic derivatives, a GMP process. So that is now a highly efficient process from an antibody to IND, it now works in two years to generate a new product um, development candidate. And since we are able to kill these non dividing cells, we believe that we can also put something on top of standard therapy. As mentioned, you have these dormant tumor cells, cancer stem cells, which survive standard of care. So standard of, of care is good in debulking, but as shown in the pictures, these, st these stem cells survive the tumor regrowth and relapse, and this minimizes the survival of the patient. So, but if you have now a drug which not only debugs the tumor, but also kills these root cause cells, these cancer stem cells, the dormant tumor cells, we really believe we put something on top, again, with our mode of action, which is very different to everything else. So we have a pipeline. So the first one is in phase one. The next slide will show you data. We have ongoing, so here we are, we are filing currently the CTA for the next program for non-Hodgkin. Next year, we're going for prostate cancer with the PSMA with our payload. And with the new top of ones, we will target GCC for GI cancer, colorectal cancer. So this is an ongoing, again, we have now in the plug and play mode, and we can really, let's say, go with targets antibodies immediately to product development candidates. As mentioned, we are already in the clinic, so we have now 18 patients treated with an HTP-101 monotherapy. You see this highly treated patients with several lines of prior therapy. For the sake of time, I'll focus only on the last cohort, which was six patients in the, with 100 microgram per kilogram. As you see here, one was the dose was reduced. But from these five patients consecutively treated with the, with the 100 microgram per kilogram dose, Three went into partial remission, so three out of five. And these, let's say, were very good responders, so these are now objective responses. One, this one is going already to a very good partial remission. And as mentioned this morning, this is a patient who had seen BCMA CAR T cells resistant, resistance to GPRC5 D bispecific, and this is the best responding patients now going to a very good partial remission. Just again to re-emphasizing that the payload can really put something on top 
for these patients which otherwise would have no treatment option left. So we are highly pleased to see that three out of five are responding and we will, let's say, continue to the end of the year with the phase one and then move on to the, to the phase two with our program and the other programs would generate um, catalyst as well to increase the value of the company and to, with the goal to become a leading a global ADC player based on our payload technology. Thanks a lot for your attention.